Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Leah Toshie. Welcome, and today I have a very special guest. You've probably seen her before in the vlogs or in our old, uh, what was it, the drunk spelling the game? Drunk mm -hmm. That was a funny one, go watch that. But this is my sister-in-law, Victoria, or Tori. And today, Tori's gonna help me with my Two Cents with Tosh episode, this is episode number three. I'm nervous. You're nervous? <laughs> <laughs> don't be nervous, we haven't read the entries for this episode yet, so they're gonna be surprises. We don't know what we're talking about, but it'll be a lot of fun. And without further ado, let's give our two cents. Are you ready? <laughs> Let me grab yeah. my coffee. Oh my gosh, I'm scared. Uh, okay. My coffee's really freaking hot right now, too. I'm also Ooh. glad I stopped sniffling. My allergies were bad today, this morning. Mine too. I'm really nervous. Don't like, be nervous. I don't want to give these people bad advice. You won't. <laughs> Listen, our advice is not like, you must do it. This is just more of like, a what we would do if we were in your situation, or like, our opinion. We are just two, you know, women in our 30s who have lived a little. So, are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. I'm scared. I like legit get scared every time. Okay, first one. What is your advice on being with someone that you connect with in the deepest level? Your friends, you laugh, you have a great time and attracted to each other. However, they don't want the same thing as you do, which is an exclusive relationship. Okay, I see. Got it. So we've got like a, like a friend turning into maybe a relationship, but like one person feels one way and the other person doesn't type thing. Yes. Is there a point where you weigh the good and the bad and say this person checks all the boxes, but ultimately doesn't want what I want? Or is that just a deal breaker right out of the gate? Hmm. I'm trying to think if I've been in this situation, but I personally haven't. I mean, this could be like a girl guy situation or like girl, girl, guy, guy, whatever. Yeah. But mm -hmm. for me personally with like my guy friends, mm -hmm. I don't think I've had a guy friend, which I have a lot of guy friends. I probably have more guy friends than girlfriends, mm -hmm. which I don't prefer, okay? I'm not that girl who's like, I hate girls. I, I, hate girls. Yeah. Like, I love girls, <laughs> I'd rather have more girlfriends, but it's just hard. Um, none of my guy friends have ever like had feelings for me and I didn't have feelings for them mm -hmm. or vice versa. We were always on the same page. Like I had some guy friends that like we like tried because mm -hmm. we both kind of felt something. And right. then you other friends. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but I think the thing is too, when people are like that, the whole thing is we don't want to ruin the friendship if you try it, right? Right. Have you been in that situation? So I kind of took this question like maybe, let's say they like met on like a dating app or something mm -hmm. and they like are dating and all of the stuff is there to have like an amazing relationship, but yeah. the guy doesn't want, or the girl, whoever, doesn't oh, want the I relationship. See. So it's like we okay. have all the pieces but like they don't want what I want. Okay, you're right, because I'm, we interpret it two different, this mm -hmm. is why I wanted to have a guest, because <laughs> you can interpret it two different ways. I think your way is more correct. I just assumed they were like besties already. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I, my brain like went there, but it does sound like it's just somebody that they connect with on all levels and they check all the boxes, but she wants to keep going with it. And he's like, oh, like this is such a good friend vibe. I'm Let's friend zoning you. Exactly. But I think in either way, like best friends or just dating, it comes down to the same answer. You gotta move on. Like oh. you can't take it there because if that person doesn't want what you want, yeah. It's not gonna but work. then okay, so I hear what you're saying, mm -hmm. right? She has feelings, he doesn't in that way, but they have a great friendship. So does she stay in the friend zone with him, knowing she has these feelings, or does she say like because I have these feelings and you don't, we also can't be friends? That's the hard That's part. That's the hard part. Cause you, cause like you connect on all the other levels, so you want to keep them in your life because mm -hmm. they do like make you happy, bring you joy, right? Have and a you connect. You know, have yeah, connect, have the great friendship with. But then is that like hurting you because you secretly like this person, and then if that person starts dating somebody else, exactly, then you're either gonna like secretly be bitter and become like a bad friend because mm -hmm. you have underlying like all what's the word? All uh, alternative. Alter, Wait, alter. What's the word? Like, it's not ulterior. Ulterior, ulterior motives. motives. That. I mean, it kind of is a situation, spoiler alert if you haven't watched, what? Emily in Paris. Yes. I mean, it's not spoiler for this season, but with yes. her and Gabrielle, like, yes. it's the same situation. Okay, You're never going to be really happy. Friends. They stayed friends. But had this underlying thing. Mm -hmm. I think 
Personally, this is what I would do. And this this gets a little gray area. So it kind of depends on the type of person you are. Some people don't like gray area, right? It's either black or white. I think for me, I would keep them as a friend, but not like the bestie friend. Like I don't do everything with them. I don't tell them everything, but like we're still cool and friends in the fact that like every once in a while, let's go catch up at lunch. Mm -hmm. But I'm not like all up in his life and he's not all up in my life right. to where I'm thinking about it all day, every day. And I can keep it kind of at a distance. Mm -hmm. You know, you have those friendships where yeah. like y'all like are good friends and you respect each other, enjoy each other's company, but like you only see him like once, I don't know, like three times a year to right. catch up and stuff. You're not even, like unfriend him on Instagram. Yeah, you're not, you're not like not, not friends, but you're not close friends. It's mm -hmm. not the friend that you talk to every single day and tell him, every, right. tell him everything. That way I can still keep the person in my life as a positive person. Like this mm -hmm. person makes me happy in some way, shape or form. But when it gets into the nitty gritty of like that person getting in an, another relationship or mm -hmm. me actually liking somebody else or whatever, it's not so close up in your face, all up in your life, you know? I think it's like case by case, I guess with her question, if they didn't live in the same place, that's easier to do. Oh yeah, we now, don't know that. if you're in college with this person and you see them every day on campus or you see them at all the parties, that's harder. That's harder. That's a lot harder because it's in your face. So I think honestly, that type of question is case by case. And it's like, yeah, you have to really take a long, see. hard look at yourself and see, can I do this? Like, can I stay this person's friend and keep everything copacetic? And if you can't, then you gotta move on if you truly can mm -hmm. and it's not gonna make you like cry every night or like feel bad about yourself every time you go to sleep then go ahead and be their friend i agree and she asked is there a point where you weigh the good and the bad i think you just need to and it's not it's not bad to try like if you're like i'm not sure let me try to be this person's friend and see how it goes mm -hmm. you can always change your mind so mm -hmm. like if you're trying to be just friends with this person and keep it like on a friendship level and you find that it's too hard then you can and just say this is too hard yeah. and reevaluate yeah. and say like we can't be friends mm -hmm. i don't know that's but it might work but it, it might, might work if you're yeah. able to be friends yeah because honestly you might be able to stay friends with this person and then like you meet somebody else and then you're mm -hmm. like wait a minute i don't really like this guy like i thought i did like you could test the waters mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be a hard decision right now like right. you know i think too like just as humans we have to like understand that like people are in different places in their life mm -hmm. and just because like you said it's not right now doesn't mean that it's never you know i don't mm -hmm don't like waiting around for anybody but yeah. live your life and if you guys are meant to come back together and that connection's really strong you will if you're not period you won't okay the next one says hello what is your two cents on dating when you don't like to go out and don't like meeting new people this is so relatable so relatable <laughs> oh my god and this is great for you because, well you're not single anymore well i just but went you, through this though like yeah. it's hard i'm like a little weird because i'm a homebody social person very strange mm -hmm. i can like be at my house but be on the phone with like five people in a night right mm -hmm. so it's like i want to be in but i want to talk but i would say honestly dating apps get a really bad rap but they're kind of good for the homebody that just yeah. wants to like meet people that they may not meet if they were out or don't want to go to like clubs and bars and lounges. Um, but eventually, obviously you have to go out and like meet these people in person. So, you know, I think you just have to kind of like put yourself out there a little bit more, especially when you have intentions of wanting something. So like if you know you want a relationship and you want to meet someone, you actually have to move like with those intentions and you're yes. not gonna meet them in your house, unfortunately. Here's my view, obviously I'm married to your brother, mm -hmm. but here are my views on it because I did meet your brother on Instagram and I was never on the dating apps because when I was single, this was so freaking long ago that the dating apps didn't exist. <laughs> so I never got to play around with the dating apps, but I feel like it's all gonna happen. Like. I wouldn't put too much pressure on being like, I have to be social. I have to force myself out, especially if that drains your energy. If you're the type of person where it literally pains you to go out and being around a bunch of people all the time drains your energy, don't force it. Obviously, yes, get yourself out there every once in a while when you can muster up the energy. But the reason why I say don't force it and it's not like, a requirement is because I strongly believe that you're gonna find the person you're meant to be with regardless, right? Like even if you're not trying, you're gonna run into them in some way, shape or form. You might just be going to the gym, run into them there. You might go to Starbucks drive through and the line is too goddamn long. So you're like, fuck it, I'm gonna park. I'm gonna park and go in. Yep. And then you meet them in the line, you know? Yep. You might just like have a friend that's like, hey, we're having a little game night, like come through and they bring a friend that you don't know and that ends up being the person. So it's mm -hmm. like, on one hand I say yes, you're young, go and be social occasionally, like when you feel like you can do that, but don't feel like you're failing at life by staying in 
because you can meet someone anywhere, grocery store, mm -hmm. on an app, on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Like, Instagram's not even a dating app, but you might meet someone it's through the, Instagram. It's the biggest dating app. Right? It's like the <laughs> unofficial. biggest, unofficial. Like unofficial. Even like TikTok now. It's like other right. people meet people all the time. You're gonna meet somebody without trying. Mm -hmm. And that's usually how it happens. My advice okay. is just live your life how you want, but just in life in general, dating or not, you should do things that like make you nervous or scare you all the time mm -hmm. to like grow as a person, mm -hmm. to just get yourself out there and try new things and have new experiences. Mm -hmm. So don't change who you are. Like if you don't like to go out, you don't like to go out, but challenge yourself to go out every once in a while just to better yourself and meet people in life in general. Don't feel like you have to do that or you're gonna be single forever. Mm -hmm. I had this one like so crazy and so like random, but I always go back to this advice like at all aspects of my life. So when I went to college many moons ago, there's like an entrance. <laughs> Not many moons ago. <laughs> many moons ago. <laughs> and this guy told us, he was like, you know, a lot of times like going to the college is really scary. It's the first time we're on our own. But if you commit to once a month going somewhere that you've never like gone and done and go by yourself, mm -hmm. you will meet tons of new people and you will have tons of new experiences. Mm -hmm. And by the time you're finished with, you know, your university, you will have literally met, you know, thousands of people and have a really big network. So yeah. I even take that into my adult life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even if it's as small as like, I'm gonna go to Starbucks and like do work from Starbucks today. Committing to doing something once a month, like once every 30 days mm -hmm. that's new to you is not too much. It doesn't like take you out of your, you know, comfort zone too much, but it at least allows you to, you know, grow in some way. The I think the overarching thread in all this is like, you're doing it for you, yes. right? It's like you're yes. not doing it for anything else but yourself and the universe brings those people to you once you're doing something for yourself. That's yes i strongly to. believe that when you are bettering yourself and you're being selfish and focusing on that your energy starts to change mm -hmm. and then that attracts to where you are so it's not necessarily you having to go out if you just live for you the energy changes and then people are like drawn to you mm -hmm. you know so don't feel bad that you don't like to go out that's totally normal these days <laughs> like people don't like to go out and i'm yeah. one of those people There's still like diseases out there girl to go out. girl period <laughs> Next one. Ooh, this one's a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi, Leah. So I need advice on how to balance family when you're starting one of your own. I am married and my husband and I decided that we want to start trying for a baby. Congratulations. I'm really excited about this journey, but it seems like my mom feels some type of way. She is always making comments about how I'm, how I've moved away and she lets me live my life, which makes me think that she is really bothered. I visited home three times this year, but it seems like it's not enough. I even offered for them to come visit me since I'm in Virginia and they are in Miami, but they haven't said anything. I feel like once I have this baby, they're gonna try, I can't read. They're going to be expecting even more of me visiting, but I don't feel like it's fair. I'm trying to place boundaries, but since I am the only person in my immediate family to get married and move, it seems like they are not understanding. Any advice would be appreciated. Love that you're doing this series. This is this is a good one. This is this is loaded. I mean, this okay, so we're definitely going to have different views because we have different family dynamics, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And you live away from your family and I don't I did, but I don't. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to be surprised at my answer. Though. <laughs> should I go first? Yeah, go for it. Okay, with me with families, here's the thing. I think you should always voice your opinion and the whole like, you know, you can't do this and you can't do that because that's your family, that's your mom, that's your dad, that's your brother. I'm like, I don't give a shit. I'm gonna tell you how it is. I'm gonna set up boundaries whether you're my family or not and you're either gonna respect the boundaries or you're not. And if you're not, like, bye. But I'm very like blunt like that with family. Some people have a different dynamic where like they cannot like quote unquote disrespect their elders or whatever. I don't give two flying fucks. But in your situation, I would do my visits if that's what you wanna do. If they don't come visit, they don't come visit. And if that if that's them not seeing my kid as much or not seeing me and my husband as much, that's not on you, that's on them. And that's how I feel. And, and then if I decided one year that I only wanna go travel there one time and they're mad about it, I came to visit one time. Y'all didn't come here at all, so that's on you. Mm -hmm. I know maybe once you have a baby, you're thinking, I want my kid to have these relationships with them. Mm -hmm. So you're thinking about the kid, but that's also not on you though. I feel like this gonna be completely different about what you're gonna say. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> no, um, it's similar. So I'm just, you can ask anyone in my life. Mm -hmm. I'm a person who really, really believes in communication, okay? 
She does. And coming from a person who like my mom is like my best friend. I've had times in life where I feel like my mom may have thought that by me dating someone or starting a family or whatever, it will take me further away from her. Mm. And I think we have to understand that like our parents are human too. Mm -hmm. And they may not know how to vocalize that they're afraid of something or afraid that the dynamic will change, right? Mm -hmm. So first of all, you gotta communicate. So you have to just like, instead of assuming things in your head, you gotta just ask your mom like, what's up? Second part of this. Period. See, this is why I brought the wiser <laughs> sister on here because what the fuck am I saying? We said the same thing. <laughs> but I think with that being said, we have to understand that your purpose in starting a family is to do just that and that is start a family. Your parents have to respect that when you have kids, that's a new household. So you can't keep going back to your old household and neglecting your new household, right? Mm -hmm. That may be new traditions, new places you spend Christmas, new places you spend the holidays, whatever. Maybe your tradition is y'all go to Mexico, but your family has always been at grandma's house right mm -hmm. and that's different for some people so i think you have to just establish what you want your family to be and let your parents understand that like you guys are going to make it what y'all want to make it and if that means less trips it means less trips and set your boundaries for you and be unapologetic about it I like that you added communication because that's so true. So you're kind of saying that you think she feels some type of way. Ask her if she feels some type of way. Mm -hmm. And maybe she doesn't and you're reading into what she's saying too much or whatever the case may be. You never want to assume, right? When you talk, you can come to an agreement. So maybe she does feel some type of way. But then you can say, you can reassure her that like, I love you guys. You're my family. I don't want to have my own family and raise a family without you guys in my, my new family's mm -hmm. life. Again, I like to put myself in the situation. Mm -hmm. My whole family is in California. I was born out there. My whole mom's side lives in the same fucking city. We are the only ones that had to move out of California because of my dad's job. And when I was, I mean, I was younger, but I've heard the stories. When we moved out to Texas, the whole family was like, how's the dynamic gonna change? They were worried that me and my brother wouldn't have a good relationship with, or as close of a relationship with my grandparents. That wasn't the case at all because then we started to create our own combined family dynamic mm -hmm. where my cousin and my grandparents would come every summer to our house in Texas. And then every single Christmas my whole life, my family and me would go to California for the holidays. So, and this was before FaceTime. Mm -hmm. Now we can FaceTime all of them whenever we want, my nieces, nephews, whatever. But at the time it was just, we we created our own tradition mm -hmm. in order to keep our families connected mm -hmm. even though we're states away. Mm -hmm. And as yes. a kid that grew up in that situation, it was fine. Mm -hmm. Like I have the same close relationship that my other cousins have with my grandparents even though I lived the furthest. Everything turned out fine, but I'm sure all the adults at the time had to kind of figure that out. And I'm that's sure what they came up with. Yeah, I'm sure everyone had their opinions. <laughs> All's to say. Okay. That was a lot. I think you're right about the communication. Mm -hmm. I think when families start to form within families, things change and that's just life. You can have traditions made and if you move again in the future, or if you move back or whatever, the traditions can change. Things can be altered mm -hmm. and that's okay. Be, but be fluid. Be fluid. I feel like the overall thing is that you got to communicate. Mm -hmm. So when you have a baby, your mom can totally change her tune and say, you know what? I want to be with my grandkid. I'm moving where you are. And that's so true. People will be switching up like with an idea versus the real thing. Mm -hmm. Like they might say, oh, we, ne we never, never want to go visit you in Virginia. Like it's so far. It's so much work for us. Like that's just not a priority. But as soon as that little baby's born and it's no longer an idea, it's a real thing. Mm -hmm. They might be like, pack the Literally. bags. We're going to Virginia. <laughs> Literally. That's our two cents on that. Yeah. Period. We gave you four cents. Yeah, we gave you fucking 10 cents on that one. Just shut me up sometimes. I can't stop talking. Okay, the next one says, I'm getting nervous every time you're Every time. Oh, God. Hey Leah, so I've been meaning to write you, but everything I thought I should ask about, I've always come to the con conclusion Girl, you just need therapy, <laughs> LOL. But I love this series and would love for you to be able to keep it going. Thank you so much, I'm so excited. Okay, my husband's in the military, so we move around quite a bit. We moved to a new state over the summer and I'm finally about to start a new job. I've always worked at an office, so I always meet people that way or through my husband, but this job is working from home. I'd love to make new friends slash meet people because it's just my husband and I here, but the way the social anxiety is, dot, 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 LOL. 
I get it. What advice would you give? Oh, this is like similar. What advice would you give for me to try to meet new people slash make friends? Everything about this new job is taking me out of my comfort zone and I'm nervous but excited. So I guess that's gonna be the motto for 2023. Thank you and good luck with everything you wanna do. I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. We kind of touched on this. We kind of touched on this. Yeah. Making new friends. Making new friends is hard when you're an adult and it's hard to find people when you're at this age i don't know how old you are but in our 30s mm -hmm. it's hard to find like a good balance of friends where like for me i don't want kids nor do i have kids so it's hard to find people my age that don't already have kids that can still do stuff mm -hmm. right that's hard enough without having to find friends that you even enjoy their company you know laugh with have mm -hmm. a connection mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. and then once you're married it's almost like you have to find friends that are also in relationships well for me no like i know some couples who do fucking everything together mm -hmm. i leave Victor all the time i'm like bye i'm going to brunch like whatever but when you do find couple friends and mm -hmm. now like you're in a relationship too it's hard for the girls to have a connection and the guys True. It's sometimes it's, it's one or the weird. other. Like weird. the guys don't really, they don't like hate each other, but they don't like click the way the girls do, or the husbands click, and the girls are just kind of like, and the this bitch ain't my vibe. It's hard because like if someone breaks up, you yes. have broken up the couple French, the the force yes. of this. And done. that's the other thing. Do we? Do the guys stay friends and the girls stay friends? But like that's awkward. It's a whole thing. Adult friendships are fucking hard. It's hard. But I just went through this. I just moved to Texas from California. Oh yeah. Two years ago. Um, for me. Well, I will say it's harder with the work from home thing because mm -hmm. I would say all of my friendships that I have made here have kind of been through work. So I would say first off, like when I first moved here, I got in a, like a Facebook group that was Girls oh, in Texas that I, I just know moved that. to. Mm -hmm. And You're like, so cute. I never actually met up with anybody, but it was a good way to at least figure out what was going on, see that there were other people in your same boat. But I think I just kind of go back to what I said for the last girl, you just have to commit. I know it's a social anxiety thing. I get it. I don't like to leave my house too sometimes, mm -hmm. but you got to commit to one time per month just doing something, even if it's a workout class where yeah. you go there and like you work out with a group of ladies for one hour and you leave, but just commit to one thing you can do per month to just, just have some sort of social interaction and say hi to another human. Sister, <laughs> you give such great advice. Really? Yes, because... I'm not even on Facebook, so I wouldn't even have thought that, but that's mm -hmm. so true. Like Facebook has groups for fucking everything and mm -hmm. like down to the niche. Another thing, I did try this in, uh, when I moved to Florida. When I moved to Florida, I didn't know anybody except Vic. Mm -hmm. I moved there for his ass and I had no friends either. The closest friends I made there were from a job. Mm -hmm. However, I made friends just by like, I made gym friends. Mm -hmm. And I will say when I was out there, I did get on Bumble BFF. Mm. I don't know if I told you that. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I got on Bumble BFF. Did you ever meet anyone? Uh, meet up with anyone? I didn't because here's what I found. If you're a more open-minded person, like period, you can make friends on there. But at the time, right, I'd get on there and a lot of women have this in common and maybe like I'm just weird. It'll be like, I have dogs and I drink wine. And those are two things that don't align with me. <laughs> I'm a cat per I love dogs. I love animals in general, but I'm a cat person and I don't drink wine. It'll be like, I love dogs, I drink wine, and I like to watch The Bachelor. I also don't watch that show. So it was like harder oh, for that's me. me. That's you. <laughs> like, uh, and what I'm saying is like, for majority of women, there's so many that's other right. women on mm -hmm. there that you can become friends with. I'm just a weirdo. The other thing is, I was a bitch, okay? I was judging people. Like, I was like, she doesn't look like she wears makeup, which is not a bad thing, but like, what? Like, you know when like you see someone who like probably doesn't have the same interests as you? Mm -hmm. Like hair, makeup, beauty, like going to brunch and dressing to the nines for no fucking reason, like that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I was just like, oh, these girl, like this girl's not gonna be my cup of tea. Mm -hmm we'll probably get along fine because I pretty much get along with everybody. But like my actual cup of tea, Bessie, that I want to like hang out with every day because I have mm -hmm. no friends here, probably not. Mm -hmm. And then I'd be like, oh, this bitch is stunning. She could steal my man. And I'd be like, next. Like I, <laughs> I was like really, sister, I had a reason to not be friends with everybody. Mm. And I think that also just came from a place of, I was too scared to meet anybody. It all, it all came from a place of fear mm -hmm, is what I'm trying mm -hmm, to say. Mm -hmm. But there's Bumble BFF, there's Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. And I will say- Remember we went to that meetup group that one time? Yeah. 
I like made her go with me. Literally, I bought two tickets, and yes. I was like, "It's a blogger brunch." We're and going. we went. And like honestly, had I gone by myself, I probably would have been terrified. Had she yes. gone by herself, she would have been terrified. Yeah. But together, it was like wasn't as scary, you yeah. know. And once we got there, we realized everyone was scared and the yes. craziest thing is i have probably made like four like solid connections from that thing i just did one of the girls make up for her wedding yeah and it's from going and going meeting there. her at that thing and okay two years ago yeah i will Crazy. say like yes we had each other for that but everyone else that went to that little meetup came by themselves so and like when we went around the table and just kind of introduced ourselves everyone was like oh well half of them like were new to dallas mm -hmm. so they were like oh i just moved here i don't know anyone i you know i thought i could make some friends and they all said i was terrified to come here today by myself like mm -hmm. everyone's feeling how you feel so that even goes to say like say you're at the gym right mm -hmm. and this happens all the time you don't want to talk to anybody because you're like nervous that they'll like be mean or whatever but i swear if you just go compliment somebody at the gym you end up being besties mm -hmm. and it'll start small so like a girl will come up to me at the gym and be like oh my god i love your shorts where are they from i'm like bitch they're from amazon and then we become like friends on instagram we're like oh my god get my instagram and then we it starts by just saying hi to each other every time where they're like mm -hmm. oh hey girl not even a conversation and then the more you see of each other on instagram stories at mm -hmm. the gym mm -hmm. it turns into more stuff and then maybe ends up like oh let's go get coffee and it's just like a natural slow thing mm -hmm. i think too we think that it's going to be too much like if you're especially if you're introverted you almost sometimes feel like you don't want to make friends because right. you're like, you're like oh my god it's so much me. like yeah. they're gonna want to hang out all the time immediately like i'm not ready for that mm -hmm. and that's never how it is it's always starts slow mm -hmm. and then you get more comfortable and it doesn't feel like mm -hmm. so much totally and exchanging social media is i feel like it's very like low like yes it's low investment right it's low investment it's, it's not too much pressure mm -hmm. to do anything mm -hmm. you kind of see if you have stuff in common yeah you may see their stories like, oh my gosh i did that oh my gosh I, you know whatever and you just start talking i think you just have to put yourself out there That's just, like even like and it's not even like putting yourself out there like a mile just like an inch just like an inch, inch by inch by inch until you meet someone yeah little steps little little Ooh, this one's titled XBFF advice. I swear in every episode I've had an XBFF situation, which is just so as fitting much as with we're my making life. friends, we're losing friends. Uh, Jeez. Period. <laughs> Okay. Hi, Leah. I'm a huge fan of you and your vlogs, and I thought I'd write in about a problem I had in the past that I've been thinking about recently. My ex BFF and I will be attending a party soon, and we haven't spoken at all in two, in over two years. Okay. Our backstory is this. Bitch, I'm getting it. We're getting into it. This is okay. a good last one. This is a, this good, is a good last, last, good last okay. question. Our backstory is this. We had been friends for over 10 years. She's a little younger than me and always had family problems. I tried my hardest to help her out in many ways from helping her apply to school, helping her move into a new apartment, and even small things like buying supplies or furniture. After she moved out, it felt like she leaned on me a lot to the point where it got out of hand. Doing simple things like researching a store to buy clothes from or looking up somewhere to get her hair done were things she somehow would get me to do. Honestly, like I've been that friend who makes my other friends do shit because I don't like to do shit. <laughs> self-reflection it sounds like i became her personal assistant but it felt like i was becoming her mom it got down to a point where she got in trouble with a guy she was seeing and needed my help and when i overreacted and got angry before making sure she was okay her response was along the lines of i don't need you to be angry i need you to just help me in a way where it sounded like she knew how stupid slash careless she was being but didn't care because she just wanted me to fix it all mm -hmm. after i made sure she was okay i told her i would talk to her later and then didn't really speak to her for a week she got worried and when we finally did talk i told her everything about how i felt i was super honest and probably too blunt but i just wanted us to be honest and work through this after a week why can't i fucking read bitch a week after our talk she messaged me and she said she needed some time to herself to get her shit together and thought we should stop hanging out and talking i didn't understand why i had to be that extreme but agreed thinking she would eventually want to hang out soon she never messaged me again and i didn't really reach out to her either because on social media she was hanging out with her other friends and living her life like normal so i figured i wouldn't bother her like i mentioned we're both going to this party soon and i'm wondering how i should deal with things when i see her should i be normal and polite and act like nothing happened 
friend and like we're just acquaintances or should I be nice and try to talk to her with the intention of hanging out with her again or catching up? I guess my biggest problem and the reason I brought I bring this up is because when we stopped talking, it really hit me hard. She was my close and almost my only friend and I had no one to talk to when I was going through a lot. Becoming friends again would be great, but also a part of me just doesn't wanna deal with her drama that I'm sure she still has going on. I also know now that both of our lives are different and there still might be some animosity towards each other. How would you deal with this? Thanks so much and sorry, this was pretty long. You can cut it down however you feel, of course. No, no, we read it all. Yeah, we read it all. We gotta get all the background information. <laughs> Ooh, okay, so. Mm, this is loaded. This is loaded, but I'm in it. As far as like just getting down to the nitty gritty of how, she, how you should act towards her and if you should be friends with her again, that's dependent on how you feel. Okay, so if you're, if you miss her and miss y'all's friendship more than whatever animosity you have towards her or like feeling like she just wants you to be her like mom figure or whatever, then I say be friends with her again. Cause life is too short. If you have a good connection with somebody and a good friendship with somebody, you don't want to cut it off just because you are annoyed by this situation or annoyed by how she treats you. Also though, at the same time, <laughs> is this person that you're dealing with somebody that you can be friends with again and you guys can change the dynamic of the friendship? Because if she's not that type, like you rekindle the friendship and then it goes back to exactly what it was before and no problems were solved. Mm -hmm then there's kind of no point. Mm -hmm. That's how I viewed my friendship breakup is like, I've thought about it over and over again if I run into this person, cause you're about to run into this person and you know that. I live in the same city as this bitch and I'm just like, I might run into her someday <laughs> unexpectedly. How, how am I gonna act? What mm -hmm. you're asking, like how should I act? What should I say? I've kind of played it through in my head before. Do I owe this person a conversation? Do I have anything to say? Do I wanna hear what they have to say X, Y, Z? Mm -hmm. My thoughts and my own advice that I'm kind of giving you is that if I allow a conversation, whether that's an apology or me explaining how I feel and that person explaining their side and hearing them out and like potentially rekindling the friendship and bringing it back, is that gonna be a positive thing in my life where I now get my friend back, but it's better than before? Or do I get a friend back that we're just gonna end up in the same situation again? For me, I know that person's not changing for shit. Mm -hmm. So there's just no point. Even if I have days where I miss our friendship or think like, oh, she was my friend for over 10 years. Cause same situation for me, friend for over 10 years, over 20 years. Even if I have those soft moments, I know at the end of the day, that person's gonna take no responsibility and that person's not gonna change. Mm -hmm. So therefore I'm not gonna cause myself more pain pain all over again to go through all this all over again if I know it's gonna be the same. So for me, if we ended up at the same party, I would just be like, oh, hey, and pretend like she's an acquaintance. I would not allow conversation. I would not wanna say how I feel. I don't wanna hear an apology or their side. I would just be like, hey, if they approached me and was like, do you wanna talk? I'd be like, I'm so sorry, I don't. Good to see you though. Mm -hmm you know, but that's me. That's because I've thought about it. So you have to think about, is this a good situation for you or is what happened? What should have happened? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you hit it on the, like you hit the nail on the head. Like for me, I am diplomatic in a lot of things. Yes. I communicate she is. in a lot of things, uh -huh. but when friends and exes ruin like our friendship, that is where I draw the line. And for me, I'm sorry to say it, that person's dead to me. Yeah. It, it, they, it just is. It's like, She's especially if you know you've been a good friend. Yeah. And you've done all you can do. I've actually had a situation like this and I've had to see this person because we run in a very similar circle. T. I saw her at a wedding actually and we're ladies, so we kept it cute, mm -hmm. but there's no conversation. There's no and conversation. It just is what it is. There's, yeah, there's no, there's no rekindling. There's no nothing. If you are passing each other or in the same vicinity, you can, of course, say hi. That doesn't cost anything. Mm -hmm. But after that, that's it. It's like mm -hmm. that person's going to be who they are, and what they've done to you still stands. Yeah. And in your situation in particular, you've reached out and tried to rekindle, and she's the one that did not reach back to try to work this out. So it's like, if she says anything to you, it's like, why now? I've already said something to you and you didn't mm -hmm. reach back out to me. So for that reason, I would a thousand percent have nothing to say. And, yeah. um, you know, just go and enjoy yourself and don't give it one other other thought, but look like a bad bitch. Period. <laughs> I'm this, <laughs> you made a good point that she, you put the ball in her court. After that, I mean, maybe it's because you're a Gemini, I'm a Scorpio, or like, I'm just a bitch, but like, if you didn't respond to me after that, fucking toodaloo. Literally. I would be donezo. Yeah, same. 
that's a lot. I mean, I feel bad because I feel like possibly this meetup that you oh, were gonna see her at might have something. been a holiday party. Okay, I don't know if they do this for you, but like, if y'all can, can you like email back in and let her know how it went? No, I, yes. <laughs> what? I have I said wanna know. in other episodes, like keep us posted, keep us yeah, updated. I wanna then, know how this meeting went. In future episodes, if you just reply to the email you emailed in and give us like an update, yeah. we'll, you know, I'll read the updates in the videos. Yeah, I wanna know. Cause, Cause like I, the people wanna know. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really interested in how, how this meeting went. Just by the way you emailed in, I feel like you have a good head on your shoulders mm -hmm. and like, you deep down you knew what to do and everything but let us know how it went like did you see her did she try to speak did you speak did y'all have a conversation like what's the fucking yeah, tea like what's the tea tell us i think we have to call it okay. do we want to do one more no we should call it no, should we, we do one more i can call it no we want to do one more i don't, I don't know. know we have time okay Okay, we're gonna one do more. one freaking more. <laughs> this is so much fun. This one's titled Advice Breakup. Leave them, sis. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know what that yet. <laughs> Hi, first, thank you for doing this. You're so welcome. Also, let me know if you want Tori more episodes. Okay, my current situation is a little complicated. Isn't it always? <laughs> Never I recently, not. ooh, I recently ended a relationship of nine years. We lived together, but he decided to move to another state, but this is still his apartment. Our families are really close too. That always makes it so much harder. We broke up because he wanted to be on his own to figure out his issues. It really broke my heart and he says, he says he doesn't know the future, but still has feelings for me. This whole thing changed my life though, and I'm struggling to be on my own and deal with all the loneliness of it all. I have some social anxiety and some health issues, having surgery soon. So it's been hard making friends or meeting new people. Also, part of me wants to just move on, but another part of me thinks we'll get back together. Maybe it's naive. I should say he was a really good partner. Sorry if I wrote too much. Appreciate any advice you could share. Girl, mm -hmm. you could write more. We love the team. Mm -hmm. This is hard. This is hard. It's tough moving on. That's really tough. Nine if you've years been, is a long time. Nine years is a long time. My advice to this is gonna be hard, mm -hmm. but I think it's best. When you're going through a breakup, especially one that you spent a good chunk of your life with, you have to start living for you, regardless of what you think is gonna happen. Whether you think you're never gonna get back together with this person or you do think strongly that you'll get back together in the future, you have to now make your whole life you. Live for yourself, like date yourself pretty much. Buy stuff, take yourself places, go on solo dates, spend all your time being extremely selfish. One, because you deserved it. You've committed to another person for nine years. So you owe this time to yourself. Learn to enjoy yourself like as just you without another person involved. You know what I mean? This is a time for you to like learn who you are even more than you already do. Mm -hmm. Try new things, sign up for different classes, just like a whole bunch of things that just invest love and energy into yourself and let the universe or whatever you believe in figure everything else out. My new thing is like being in love with your life. At some point you have to be like, I wanna be so in love with my life that like you I'm so happy else, without yeah. any, and anything else that comes into it, another friend, another partner, a new job, all those things are just bonuses to your already fucking amazing life. Every bad thing leads to a good thing. For sure. Like, it's like, it doesn't happen to you, it happens for you. You just have to know that. That. And I would just say, ditto everything she said, like perfect advice. Uh, just lean into your support system, especially when you said that you have like surgery coming up. Mm -hmm. I know like when I had to have surgery before, like I had to lean on my family way more than I ever thought I would ever have to lean on my family. So just lean into your support system, your family, yes. your friends. What's, what's one thing you did? I know you were in a long relationship where you mm -hmm. lived with the person. Mm -hmm. When you guys broke up, was there something you did that like really helped? To be honest, most of the time when I in the past have been single, that's when I've excelled the most of my life. Yeah. Like literally when I broke up, I started my business like broke up and started my business the exact same month and a business that sustained me for seven years, like solely entrepreneurship mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. So not saying that I couldn't have done that with him, but without him, it happened quickly. Mm -hmm. And I think that happened because I didn't have anyone else to lean on. I think sometimes it makes you a stronger it person. It pushes you. Yeah, to do the things that you really knew you needed to do all along. Yeah, and everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. So this reason that you guys broke up or that he decided he needed to like take some time to himself, the reason could be because this man is not, or this person is not for you and you're both gonna go your separate ways and like find what is supposed to be, or you guys are gonna get back together and this, but this time was needed 
for, both for the you. relationship, mm -hmm. for both of you individually, mm -hmm. and just for you in general, for you to chase a dream mm -hmm. or get a different perspective on life and even maybe bring a different transformed version of you to a relationship, whether that's this relationship or a new one. And so, I'll tell you this, you do not want to be in a relationship with someone that doesn't want to be there. Exactly. Like at all. Oh no. If they gotta work on themselves and they explicitly express that to you, they need to go work on themselves. Yes. Uh-huh. I think the overall thing is like, though this is a sad negative thing that you're dealing with in your life right now, you could turn it into such a good opportunity. Mm -hmm. Honestly, when I got dumped, that's when I started competing. One shows and com you know, competed at Olympia and all these things. Mm -hmm. I got fired from my last job started my vlog channel. Like mm -hmm. you try to just, and you don't know that you're gonna do that, but it's just taking a situation that you're in and trying to make the best of it the best way that you can. Literally. So just go through it. So yes. then on the other side, you can see why it was supposed to happen. Cause you're gonna find, yes. you're gonna find it out. Yeah. Just go through it. Right just now. go through it. You got this bitch. Like. <laughs> I love how you call them bitches. I'm sorry, that's my bitch. That's gonna be it for episode three of Two Cents. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that our answers were helpful. Yeah. Write in if you wanna update us and we will read it in a future video. Good. Thanks for joining me though. You're welcome. It was so, so much, much fun. fun and you're so freaking wise. I feel like you give really great advice, sister. I try. But thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Follow us both on our socials. And we will see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.